Fiat Mainz il Germania 30 km il bottom in Frankfurt fej jgħid biex nipprova il-range ta' crossovers li tipproduċi l-Opel. Ovvjament bdit bil-Mokka, biz eventualment ħarġet il-Cross Land X li jgħak ħarira jezzar u issa il-Grand Land X. Il-Grand Land X jinkel li l-opportunita nipprova il-2 liter li ħarġet biha originariament. Kif tinnotaw zoġ modelli li għet nipprovaw, għadom kamiflaġ daċ lowe zoġ modelli li ħarġum il-production line. Interessanti li jarmati b-magna 1.2 petrol turbo li tizvelupa 130 brake horsepower u metċiata ma 8-speed automatic gearbox. Għaw ħafna domandaw dawn il-vettur jax tnej bissaw u l-ġurnalisti kolla herqanin biex nipprovawom, aħna soqni għana tuko l-impressjoni jittaħa bis inkomplonara u koll il-range interessanti ta' prodotti li għaw biex nipprovaw. U fil-fat kelli l-opportunita ninta għamal bniedem li zviluppa propju din il-magna to bajas għana li miħu għan itkelmu propju fuq dak li daħal biex issir din il-magna ferm interessanti. I understand you are very much involved in the production of this new 1.2 liter engine, but before we talk specifically about it, these new pressures, these new regulations that are coming in are forcing car manufacturers to do what? We, of course, need to make sure that we fulfill all the regulation requirements. And one of the challenges there is to, as you say, um, predict what is going to happen in a, in a way. Because at the point in time where you enter the actual design and development status of a new engine and you need to provide the provisions for certain technologies on an engine, you may not always uh, have all the details on the upcoming uh, legislations. So um, at Opel what we have uh, decided to do is at very early point in time um, go for a strategy where we have uh, gasoline particulate filters on all of our direct injection gasoline engines, petrol engines, um, as well as going for the um, SCR technology on the after treatment, on the uh, emissions uh, re relevant after treatment on our diesel engines. The 1.2 liter in particular, can you give me a bit of a background on the development of this engine? Yes, so what we have here is the second generation of that 1.2 liter three cylinder turbocharged engine. It's a direct injection engine. We have uh, increased the injection pressure to 250 bars um, versus the previous generation. We have optimized the combustion process as well as um, adding a few more modifications on the turbocharger, optimizing it for low emissions and faster response, as well as reducing friction throughout the system on all the components where we could uh, managed to reduce the friction. One of the most important additions, of course, is the gasoline particulate filter, which sits very close to the engine and um, thus uh, allows us to um, use the, the hot uh, gases directly, hot emissions directly, in order to convert them with a very high uh, conversion rate and good filter efficiency. Two levels of output? That is correct. We have 110 horsepower and 130 horsepower that we offer in our Crossland X and Grandland X vehicles. And in addition, the Crossland X is also available with a non-turbocharged version of this engine with 81 horsepower. Some customers are still skeptical to buy a large car with a small displacement engine. Um, can you put their minds at rest? Well, of course, we hope that those customers will take the opportunity and actually drive one of our vehicles. The Grandland X, in combination with the 1.2 liter uh, engine with the three-cylinder engine um, and the 88 transmission, is a fantastic combination. Very much fun to drive, very dynamic, with very fast gear shifts, and you can uh, you, the customers will appreciate the the way that the torque unfolds over the complete uh, RPM range, so revolution, revolution and speed range of the engine, um, and that makes it fun to drive. In terms of of emissions obviously within the regulation so particularly low. Uh, of course, we do fulfill the Euro 6D temp regulations already now, which really only become mandatory for new registrations in the in the next year. Um, so we are very much uh, set up for the future here. Also on display is the new 1.5 diesel engine, some new technology being proposed. Can you give me a bit of detail? It would be my pleasure. This is the 1.5 litre diesel, uh, the next generation, a completely digital design. And one of the main focuses here, of course, again, is the after treatment systems of the exhaust gases. We see on this display here, if I can show you, we have at the top a what we call an NOx adsorber, that, which captures the nitrous oxides while the engine is still cold and there's not enough heat uh, available for conversion. 
The next level here is the unit that adds the add blue. And then the next brick we see in this area here is the actual SCR converter itself. And the final element here in blue, um, that is the uh, diesel particulate filter, which in this case also has another, another function as an additional SCR step. Tobias, with certain brands, not specifically Opel, we've had the problem in our country where the distances aren't long enough and the speeds aren't high enough, so the DPF filters tended to get clogged up and some customers had problems. Is this an issue with Opel and does this new generation engine address this situation? We have uh, made sure that we look at the most critical driving profiles that we find all over Europe in order to make sure that the, uh, that the design is set up in a way that this does not happen. So whatever your driving profile, even the most critical ones are taken into account when designing the system. A final question. Today, Opel has an interesting lineup of, of crossovers in the B and the C segments. Um, how do you see this develop in the near future? We see a continuing growth in the SUV segment, both in the SUV B segment with the small SUVs, as well as the total SUV segment. And I think we are very well positioned here as Opel because we have a, a great team here as the ex-champs that we call them today, um, that will help us to participate and even lead that growth in the, in the industry, in the segment in the future. Obviously taking electrification and hybridization into account. Yes, yes. So we have made a very clear com commitment that Opel will have in our lineup, we will have in our lineup by 2020, we will have four electrified versions. That includes the electrified uh, or battery electric version of the new Corsa, and that includes the uh, plug in hybrid electric vehicle version of the Grandland that we announced today. Um, and there will be two more, of course, and by 2024, all of our vehicles will offer at least one electrified option for the customers.